professional wrestling, a man whose charisma and work ethic forced the world to take notice, and a ma another man who has become absolutely synonymous with the legends of wrestling. Ladies and gentlemen, please give us a warm Phoenix Comic Con Fan Fest welcome to Nikki and Brie Bella, Daniel Bryan and John Cena. Project Total Bellas, Total Bellas. Yay, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, there seems to be quite a lot of rules in the house. How many of them actually get followed, and how many of them? And who's the rule breaker, more importantly? I think it's a dog. Actually, that's true. Josie. Josie. She broke a lot of rules. Oh, and skin. skin. Uh, as far as breaking rules, honestly, it's probably me. Uh, which is weird because I make them. But uh, these three, these three will tell you I missed a, a lot of the morning stuff because uh, physical therapy. Um, I'm always late. Uh, I don't know. I, the rules are made to be broken, right? That's why I made so many. So I'm, I'm probably the number one rule breaker. He, yeah, you did. But and everyone else we broke the rules. We were back on a flight back to Phoenix. All right. Settle down. No, you weren't. <laughs> Literally, they would take pictures if we did not make the bed. Um, I think the rules are pretty good. I mean, everyone makes their bed in the morning, right? Oh. Yeah, thank you. See, we're normal, Brian. Okay, but we had, this is, this was this. Yeah, it's probably true. This is why we did this. Has anyone ever had, like, someone stay at their house for a long period of time? No? Yeah, no. maybe? Is it? And you know you really get frustrated with them, so we thought, okay, we'll have the rules. I, in I hate to interrupt, but here is a picture that I meant to send John this morning because Nicole stayed in our house, and this is her unmade bed. I was ready late. You didn't make your bed this morning. First time ever. See, but isn't that how you're supposed to start your day? The best part about all these rules was all of these folks couldn't wait to stooge on each other and tell me. Yeah. As if they felt I was going to do something, but it became a great game of like tattle chess where everyone would try to get tattle sneak peeks on each other and I don't know. It was... That's hilarious. Yeah. I didn't make my bed. You're right. I was in a rush. Yeah, I agree. Big tag. So it looks like we've got quite a few people lined up here at the audience mic for questions, so let's just turn it over to the crowd. I have a question for John Cena. Fire away. Was it fun working with the cast of Parks and Recreation? Uh, it was. They're very funny people. And they filmed the show very fast, and I got to be like me. So yeah, it was really fun. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, this question is for Brie and Brian. Um, what are you going to name your baby? Ooh, our little girl. Um, we haven't decided yet. There's so many names, so many adorable names out they there. They want it though to begin with a B. Do you, do you have a suggestion? Yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Tough one, right? It's tougher than you think. Yeah. <laughs> 
What's your name? Miliani. Ooh, that's really pretty. That's really pretty. That's pretty, maybe that. It goes against the B, it what you against, want. Yeah. Brian's whole family, they're all named Bs. Buddy, Betty, Billy, Brian. And so he really wants, because he happened so to happen name to a marry B. somebody whose name begins with a B. So he asked if we could name our kids with Bs. And I thought, why not? Keep the tradition for him going. So, so send us any, any suggestions. Any ideas. But it has to be with a B. Brian wants basil, but I don't know if I'm for that. So, oh. right? Or right. Bonier. It's it's a for, it's a for not Bonier, Brian. It's a soft B. It's a soft B. <laughs> This question for, for Nikki, Bella, and John Cena. I just wanted to ask, what are you going to name? I mean, when are you going to um, ask Nikki to marry you? <laughs> okay. That's probably more of a question for me and not for Nicole. Um, you look so cute, by the way. You are so precious. So Magic eight ball say. Ask again later. What a great question. This one's for John. Uh, what was your favorite movie being in? Um, that's a good question. Hmm. You know what? Loved all the Fred movies. I got to live in a refrigerator, which is pretty cool, which is literally pretty cool. Uh, I got to get used to Fred's voice, which was also, that's lessons in tolerance and discipline. Um, and uh, it was funny. I got to throw some people around, beat some people up. It was cool. Fred movies. <laughs> this is for the Bella Twins. How did you get started in wrestling? Well, so Nikki and I saw wrestling, actually it was more myself, so we saw divas at the time, wrestling on TV. It was actually Mickey James, who was the match we saw, and I was fascinated by wrestling. I happened at the time to be in my early 20s, which I know everyone's like, <gasps> you weren't a five-year-old? But um, I was in my early 20s, is when I came across wrestling, and um, I was fascinated. So I looked to see how do I get into wrestling, and I found Diva Search, another bad word I know. Everyone hates Diva Search. But um, found Diva Search, so Nikki was gonna play pro soccer in Italy, and I convinced her, I'm like, just please give this a try. So we show up to Diva Search, it's actually hilarious because we showed up in like bandanas and workout clothes because we wanted to wrestle. <laughs> Everyone else looked like go-go dancers, high heels, these little outfits. So Nicole and I thought we were at the wrong place. We're like, oh, this is not for wrestling. Sure enough, it was. We didn't make it into Diva Search, but um, we asked if we could try out. And so we flew to Deep South. Yep. And, and um, yeah, got in the ring, fell in love, and then we had to work really hard to get a contract, which we did. And then we ended up at FCW. And um, packed up our car and drove all the way to Tampa, and the rest is history. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You just did not let me say a word at all. I know. No, that's the story. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't even add it. No, nope, that's it. So. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, hi. Hi. I'm actually asking a question for my eight-year-old nephew. Uh -huh. He was too shy to come up here and ask. So he wants to know if you guys play Pokemon Go. And if you do, what teams you're on. Oh. You wouldn't let me download it. <laughs> I wanted to download it and he said no. At the moment, I'm just a huge fan of Pokemon Stop. <laughs> there's, there's no app for it, totally free, and you just kind of, you just kind of live life. <laughs> we weren't into that, it. That's it. No, that's great. No. Yeah, that's what you made me do, stop. <laughs> My question is for Brian and John, when are you guys going to have a wrestling match? Well, we... Oh, right not? now in Phoenix? Everybody, everybody ooing and aahing knows we already kind of had one, and I would like to proudly say that I finished second place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, John, if you have a son, you gonna hope he's like Fred? If, uh, <laughs> Ouch, another one. There's, that a, hurts. there's a lot of speculation in that question, so I will completely dodge the question and go on to like. How about the echo in this audio system? Right? Yeah. I just want to do this real quick. Starting second baseman for the Boston Red Sox. Yeah. Marty Barrett. 
Mary. Okay, I feel good now. It's actually kind of messing me up too. Yeah, the echo. Yeah, I feel like I'm interrupting myself and I keep hearing myself. Well, I just got a Marty Mara reference in, so I'm all good. Hi, uh, <laughs> hi. My question is actually for John. Yeah. Um, for like, which we hope doesn't come soon. If you were to have a retirement match at WrestleMania, <laughs> would you rather have it against the Undertaker or Shinsuke Nakamura? Oh man, I. Uh, the words, the words retirement match are tough. I think for for anybody. That's um, why we don't want it to come soon. No, no. Uh, I'm, we're, I'm up on a panel with with two folks that are retired, so um, I just, you know, I, I've been I've been very fortunate to have all the matches I've had, and uh, whatever the powers that be say, hey, this is going to be the last one for you. That's that's fine with me. Whoever it is, wherever it is. I mean. For it to be on a grand stage would be awesome. For it to be against a formal opponent, opponent would be even better. But if it's on a random Saturday night and on a, any town USA or anywhere across the world, I've been so fortunate to have as many matches as I've had up to this point. Um, it's it's all just uh, really cool. So ho however it stops, I'm, I'm okay with it at this point. Thank you, sir, and sorry for the feels. <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> This question's for John Cena. Sure. And I was wondering how it was like doing the prank for the phone company. The, you scared the kids? That was awesome. Uh, hopefully I didn't scare a lot of people. Um, uh, you are referencing a, a little stunt that we did with uh, Cricket Wireless, where people got to do their best John Cena introduction, and right in the culmination of their speech, I came busting through the wall, and it was actually really me. And we got to talk to folks, and uh, what was cool about it is they did some screening and they only got really big fans of the WWE and fans of John Cena. So although they were surprised, uh, what you didn't see is the time that I got to spend with them after. And we got to talk about WWE, we got to talk about me, we got to talk about them. And I thought that was really fun because it's they, they weren't expecting it and it was a cool bonus for the end of their day. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. My question is for John Cena. You're so popular. No, no, it's just uh, so locked up here. They all know stuff about you guys. How long have you been wrestling for? Uh, a, a long time. How old are you? Ten. Longer than you've been alive. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, I have a question for John Cena. Yep. Um, <laughs> this is my first time ever meeting you. That's all right, you're doing great. So, um, I'm just wondering, like, what was your Favorite cartoon when you were a kid? Favorite cartoon, loved Tom and Jerry. Because uh, they just had so many crazy stunts. Loved um, uh, Wiley Coyote and the Roadrunner. Because I loved like construction and crazy designs. And uh, unfortunately for Wiley Coyote, they all went wrong. Um, I, I, I often wondered where Wiley Coyote's finance came from. <laughs> and because he was so well to do, why he was wasting his time chasing a bird. And uh, I, I just really, uh, I loved those two. Um, also, let me see, watch the Jackson 5 cartoon every morning, Tom Slick, uh, Fantastic Four. Uh, oh, we got a few Fantastic Four fans in the house. Uh, I, I, I liked cartoons, I liked cartoons. I don't know, those, and, those are some of my favorites, but I watched I also them. have like a kind of statement. Um, like my whole, my whole time when I was a little baby, I always wanted to read you. And now it's happening. Hold on, wait, wait one second. Yeah, like, oh my god. First things first, Bree, Daniel, congratulations on a little bundle of joy. Thank you. Uh, and uh, I know you, I know you guys are, are local, uh, so thank you for coming back and uh, celebrating Fan Fest with us here. Um, so my question is actually for the whole panel, and Daniel, I'll start with you. If you could have one dream match with an opponent, living or dead, who would it be? Uh, I, my the big match that I wanted before I retired was Brock Lesnar. Um, but that's just because I thought that, like, it would be an interesting beating to take. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, for my 
myself, I would love it if Nikki and I would take on Trish and Lita. It'd be Team Bella versus Team Bestie. Yes. You know, that could still happen. I, I, pl I play that on the games, and you guys always win. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully in a few WrestleManias as well. Um, Brie kind of said it, but then I would also like to have a singles match, and I think I would like it to be against Sensational Sherry. I think that would be very cool. Me too. <laughs> He'll be the guest ref. I'd, li I'd like to see that. <laughs> All right, then once again, thank you guys so much just for, uh, just for coming out and visiting with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. This question is for John. Do you like acting or wrestling? Uh, I, I love wrestling. Why? Because, because of the noise you just heard. Because when you make a statement, everybody gets involved. And in WWE, when we do something, our fans are so passionate. You do something, and everyone gets involved. And everybody's really devoted. And acting is very different. Because we don't have the noise. So uh, I like acting, and it's fun, because you get to assume different characters, and have a lot of fun. But there, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, that compares to the energy of the WWE audience. And I love it, and I'll never not love it. So that is, that's always my heart. That's awesome. Uh, this question's for John Cena. Shoot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why did he start wrestling? Because it's like the coolest job ever. <laughs> Somebody said, hey, you may be able to make this your job. I said, you're, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> so that's kind of why I started. You're very welcome. <laughs> this event completely documented by that man right there. <laughs> this question's for John. I hate to be stereotypical, but <laughs> this question's for John. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. Oh, wait, um... I thought you were going to say something like horribly stereotypical. <laughs> to make like, ooh, man, that's not good. I'm not going to give an example because you know the drill. <laughs> no, it's wrestling fan stereotypical, you know? To ask you a question. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, would you rather break or tie with Claire's record for the uh, uh, um, I guess if, if you hold the record, then um, you create a different conversation. So uh, in that aspect, uh, in no, no disrespect to Ric Flair, but I'd rather break it. But uh, that also means I have to win it and then lose it again. So I don't want to do that either. So we'll see. Hello, this is a question for all of you guys. Um, who's your favorite competitor to work with in the ring? Like, past? Mr. Brain? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, gosh, I've had so many, so many I love, but um, I have to say getting in the ring with Stephanie McMahon was my highlight. That's right. No, my that's favorite, um, yeah, thanks, Brie. Jeez, <laughs> you're definitely not mine. You're my number two. No, uh, Paige is my favorite. Yeah, she was, we just had great chemistry. She's a lot of fun. For me, it's impossible to pick a favorite. There are so many different people that I like uh, wrestling for so many different reasons, so many different situations. Uh, it's, it's a hard question to answer. I'm, I'm with him. It's kind of like picking a favorite movie. It's just tough to do. Thank you. We totally picked that. <laughs> yeah, thanks guys. Hey guys. Yeah, thanks guys. We just sound real. So we heard the story about Daniel and Bree, how they met, but we never really get the story of how Nikki and John, you guys, got started. Aww. So I don't leave out any important details. I'll yeah. kick this one over to Nicole. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so we actually met at work. We were really good friends for a long time, and then one day, John called me up and asked me to go on a date with him, and we actually were at the same Comic Con in Chicago. <laughs> so we went on our first date in Chicago at Gibson's, and it's funny because we were friends for so long, you could talk about anything, and then the minute we were like on a date, it was like, hey, what's up? <laughs> and like I had red burning cheeks, and I felt like I couldn't even talk to him. I was like, very. I think the major point we can take away from this whole conversation is our relationship started at an event like this. Yeah. So thank you all for starting this. Yeah, thank you. 
He's very romantic, though. Extremely romantic. I'm going to be a little bit of a rule breaker. So, sorry, John. So I'm going to be a little bit of a rule breaker. Um, NXT, who are you guys looking forward to and coming up? All of us or just all of you? All of us. Hmm. Um, gosh, there's so many great talent down there. Yeah. Um, I've really been enjoying Billy Kay. I really, I think she'll be great on the roster, either SmackDown or Raw. There's a lot of great talent, though. Yeah, it's hard. Royce, too. She's really good. I know there, it's, it's tough. I'm really enjoying the girls there now on SmackDown. I think we have, we got some really good NXT Oh, girls. you're enjoying Carmella? Oh. Except her. <laughs> Forgot about her. <laughs> Uh, I, I roomed with Shinsuke Nakamura 13 years ago, 14 years ago. I, I really uh, root for him because I, I think he can transcend that idea that like people who don't speak English very well can d d be very successful in WWE. So uh, I really root for him. He's just such a wonderful human being too. And, and way, way back in the day, a group of us uh, young idiots got together and decided to join Ultimate Pro Wrestling, and one of those guys was Joe Cianoa, a.k.a. Samoa Joe. So, uh, it's good, good to see him in, uh, in the NXT um, system, and man, if we could lock horns one day, that would be like a full circle deal that would be, like heads would explode, it'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Hi, this question is for John. Uh, uh, um, uh, my question for you is, do any of your friends rickroll you with the John Cena song? Do, do any of my friends what? Like rickroll you, so do they ever play a prank on you with your, um, with your own song? Because me and my friends, a lot of times we'll start like a, like a YouTube video and it's like really serene and then all of a sudden it's like, John Cena! Da, 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 da. <laughs> do any of your friends ever do that to you? Full disclosure guys, I'm way out of touch. So I don't know. <laughs> Understood your Mandarin. Need to join my Hong Kong. Then I don't understand your street terminology. <laughs> <laughs> so do I get pranked by any of my friends? No. But do I hear that song every moment of my life, even in my sleep? Absolutely yes. Yes, yes, yes. First off, I just want to say thank you for everything that all of you have done for the sport and the art of professional wrestling. And uh, my question is apparently this guy hasn't watched any of my matches. <laughs> I got no respect. <laughs> so, Brian, you've wrestled, you've wrestled in pretty much every promotion ever. What was your favorite to go in? Uh, it's impossible. It's not like it's not about a promotion. It's about different moments. Right, and I had favorite moments in a bunch of different promotions. Right, uh, one of my favorite moments was in Ring of Honor years ago, um, selling out uh, an, uh, a venue in New York City with a Japanese guy named Morishima, and none of us had ever been on television, and we were able to draw 2,500 people. To me, stuff like that is really special. It was really special uh, when I got to main event SummerSlam with John. And that's a completely different style. It's a completely different style of promotion, right? Now all of a sudden you're in, I don't know how many thousands of people were in there and millions watching on TV and stuff. But it, it's just these individual moments in all these different companies are all, I don't know, all of them were special and wonderful. What is your favorite um, video game? Favorite cool. video game? Oh, okay. Right. Video, favorite video game? Yeah, video game. Mine's Tecmo Super Bowl. I can't, I can't, I can't betray the art. I can't. I used to love Donkey Kong and Tony Hawk. They were my faves. So, Brian and I garden. We're hippies. <laughs> but there's this sweet gardening video free. game out there right yeah. now, if you guys all it check it out. It is really cool. Daniel uh, Bryan's gardening. <laughs> Not a hot seller. <laughs> okay, so this is for two of you, for, for Daniel Bryan and John. So, Daniel Bryan, do you watch this year's G1 Climax? I'm sorry, what was that? Do you watch the G1 Climax from New Japan for Wesley? Oh, I didn't see it this year, no. Oh, uh, dude, it's amazing, though. With Kenny Omega is on top of the world. Kenny Omega is very, very talented. Yeah, and this is for John. This is my burning question for you. Um, 
if my dream opponent was you, will you face Hiroshi Tanahashi from New Japan Pro Wrestling? Um, that's, I mean, that's beyond me. That's a, I, I, don't, I don't make all the decisions. I, don't, I actually don't make any of them. <laughs> so if, if that were to, to happen, and I were to have that match, of course, yes. Yeah, but dude, you could make, a, you could sort out WrestleMania with it. I don't care if it's in Japan, I don't care if it's <laughs> USA, or here, anywhere, just make it happen. I, I wish WWE you know, Japan form at one. I, I understand that, but it, as authoritative yeah. as I look, this is strictly a facade. I am a I puppet. Know. Well, I am the GM of SmackDown, that and I have true. very the one. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet for an order for Kenny Omega. I'll do it. Yeah. Right on. There it is. For our next question, we're going to need the uh, <laughs> sign language interpreters. Here you go, boss. Right on. No injuries, we're good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lucy, and this is Tony. He's loved you since before I even came into the picture, since he was a little boy. He actually has a room full of stuff that I don't even know what he's ever going to do with it when he dies. But that is his problem. And um, he's going to ask her a question to ask you guys because my sign's not that great. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I thought we were doing something else. So I was interpreting for her. I also, in that one, finished second place. <laughs> Depending on which one you saw. than what I had done before. And uh, so yeah, that's why I got rid of all this. And also for anybody who has long hair, who no longer wants long hair, there's a wonderful charity called Wigs for Kids um, that gives the hair to uh, children with cancer who need it. So uh, please feel free to donate money or your hair to that organization because a lot of the cancer organizations who give wig wigs to kids um, the families actually have to pay for them. Wigs for kids, the families don't have to pay for anything. So. And one more thing, who wants to know if you can go up there and shake your guys' hands? Uh, oh. Can you go up there and shake no, your no, hand? No, no. Oh, they don't allow it? Oh, okay, I'm sorry, my bad. Okay, never mind. I'm I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to let, let Brian know that as, as someone who myself uh, 
this is very difficult for me because I myself am dealing with anxiety and depression, and I wanted to let you know how important it is to me and to so many people out there that we have representation out there and that there's someone who we can see out there who, who has dealt with this and who has gone through this. So I just wanted to let you know how important that is to me. And I wanted to let you know that you are talented, you are smart, you are strong. And, uh, you know, if, if I can make it through, you can too. Thank you very much. That was amazing. Um, I'm the Teen Services Librarian in Yuma, and I wanted to know if you guys visit and support your local libraries. <laughs> if I, I, I will tell you definitively, <laughs> yes, I do. If uh, I may, I don't visit uh, nor support my local home because I'm, yeah. I'm traveling a lot, but I uh, have read a few great books lately. So awesome. I, awesome. I, owe, I also owe a tremendous amount of back library fees. So, I'm afraid if I go into a library, I'll be immediately tased and cuffed. So. You're blacklisted from all libraries. Yes. So it's okay, we've got your name. Um, also, I, I uh, run the Library Comic Con in Yuma, and if you guys are interested in being a guest, come Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> we drive through there a lot to get to Brawley. If anyone knows Brawley. No, okay. there's not one person here who knows Brawley. It's too bad. Yeah, it's a small little yeah, farm in town. Yeah, I'm one Brawley person. Okay, hey. Oh, 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 oh. good. See? All right. My question's for Brian. Uh, Brian, given your entries and uh, the unfortunate way your career went with you and uh, Brie having a kid, would you suggest your kid to or to not wrestle when they grow up? Um, I don't feel like uh, I'm going to suggest that they do anything. I'd like them to follow their passion. If my parents, when I was a kid, had told me, hey, I suggest that you go put on spandex tights and go fight these other dudes, they would have been like, no, that's lame, man. And, uh, but they allowed me to fall in love with, what I, with whatever I wanted to fall in love with, which just so happened to be wrestling. So that's what I would hope for, uh, for a little baby girl. No. Yes. How you guys doing? Yes. First, Daniel, we have a personal connection. You, when you were in ROH, wrestled two of my trainers, Loki and Homicide. Oh, okay, cool. And, um, from the Northeast, following you for a long time when you were the American Dragon. But more than a question, I wanted to thank you guys, Daniel, for Connor's Cure, all the work you do with them. John, your Make-A-Wish work is amazing. It's the home of Make a Wish, by the way, right here. Thank you, guys. Yep, you're welcome. Well, I'm from the Northeast myself. I run a group here locally. We do a lot of charity work. We're a costume group, and you honestly inspire a lot of us. What we do, I mean, the records that you broke, granting more wishes than anyone ever has. Sorry, I'm a little breaking up right now because I mean, watching the Connor's Cure video. If nobody's ever watched that, watch it. Um, it inspires our group and me to push harder every day to do as much as we can for people. And you guys are amazing. You're on the road over 300 days a year and still have enough time to do things for people, selflessly acting out that way. We appreciate it. Just wanted to know that. Thank you much. Thank you very much. I want you. What's your favorite place? <laughs> What's that? What's your favorite place? I can actually show you. Stand up, please. <laughs> if you would have asked me, I would have done that first. <laughs> If you were talking to me, thank you, but I still think you're talking to Nicole. <laughs> Look at his shirt. I can't. I, we're having a staring contest right now. He's, he's wearing a Johnson. I can't not look him in the eye. Oh, you win. You always do. What's your favorite food? Hold on, what was that for me again? What is it? What's your favorite food? What's my favorite food? Um, well, 
if I were to have Nicole stand up this time, I couldn't show you. <laughs> Don't worry, you're gonna get that in 15 years and it's gonna be fun. I'm kidding, totally kidding. said the same thing if you were to ask He loves steak and vegetables. Thank you. Thank you. That is the right he answer. He it all the time. <laughs> oh, man, I'm an idiot. Thank you guys for dealing with me. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> So my uh, question's for John Cena. Yeah, okay. <laughs> One of my favorite matches of all time with you is WrestleMania 20 versus Big Show, wrestling yep. for the U.S. Champion. Just curious, was Big Show really heavy when you slammed him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. How, how could you think a man that looks like him would be light? <laughs> I was just wondering, so. Okay, uh, well, the wonder is over. <laughs> The guy who looks really heavy just reminds me is really heavy. <laughs> this reminds me just like WrestleMania 3 with Hulk Hogan and Andre, so that's just, oh, that's just iconic for me. Thank you very Aww. much for putting me in that conversation, because that's a very elite one, so thank you. You're welcome. That's awesome. Uh, hello, everybody. <laughs> thank you guys for first of all coming for your, um, for your time. I have a little one that she's a huge fan of the Bella Twins. No. <laughs> Um, she she's in right here. She's in right like there. Her. <laughs> um, oh. Her question um, for your naked was, um, who was it that you faced against when you won your first title? For myself, it was Eve Torres. And um, unfortunately, I won on a twin switch. It was a really good one. <laughs> huh, and I didn't. Sometimes. <laughs> um, my uh, first Brian, time was Can we get against... that reversed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first time was Beth Phoenix. And then the second time was AJ Lee Great. with Brazel. Got to her. And um, my little one's like very, very shy. She really um, embraces the fearless. She's wondering if she could get oh. a hug from you too. Um, oh, no. no. Right after, definitely. I love that you love fearless. It's a good word to live by. I agree. I was so bummed I forgot my hat and shirt today. I know. I even called my mom, I was like, do you have an extra? She's I like, no. I remembered my hat and shirt and I made my bed He this did. <laughs> It's not a good day for me. <laughs> uh, John, how was it like spending a day with the Marines? I got my tail whipped. Uh, and uh, for those who don't know, I got to spend uh, a day with the United States Marine Corps training. And this was, man, 10 years ago. So, like, I felt bulletproof as if I could conquer the world and within eight hours, I could not lift myself off the floor. So it gave, I already had a newfound respect for the military, but they allowed me to go through essentially a compacted version of basic training. And after I did that, I realized uh, that I had even more respect for the men and women in the armed services because of what they go through to be able to just do their job, which is very important as well. It was a wonderful experience. It, it, it beat me up. You must be talking to Nicole. I wish. That's definitely you. Um, the, there's, a, there's a real magic formula there, and it's just do a lot of hard work. That's it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of doctors think that people are just going to only work two or three days a week. When I get injured, I just want to get back to you guys as soon as I possibly can. So instead of going like two or three times a week, I go like two or three times a day every day so I can get back to you guys to do what, what we all love the most. So, thanks for noticing though. Appreciate it. like your hat too. My question is for Daniel Bryan. Why did it take so long to get a brand extended draft? I don't know. So, 
as much as I said that I could make the match with John and um, Tanahashi, I don't actually have any real power. <laughs> Great. Why did I go to SmackDown? <laughs> uh, I was actually uh, pitching for the four separate barons in 2015. Um, but sometimes things just take time and they happen when they happen and that's that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question's for Daniel Bryan. Is there anyone outside of WWE or NXT that's up and coming that you're a huge fan of at the moment? Uh, gosh, there, there's so many guys that I feel like if I name one, I'm missing out. Like, you alienate a bunch of other people, right? But I think if you're a fan of wrestling outside of WWE and you're watching New Japan or if you're watching Ring of Honor or if you're watching what's going on in Mexico, you probably have a good idea of some of the guys who are who I've got my eye on, who I think like, oh, he'd do really well, so. I just hate to exclude anybody. I got you, cool, thanks. Uh, my question is also for Daniel Bryan. So you've wrestled a lot of people that have been considered the best in different companies, but if you watch a lot of interviews, most of those people consider you having been the best. What's it like to have been, by many, considered like the best in the world at what you do? Uh, <laughs> It's really sad because um, because I can't do it anymore, so I'm no longer the best at anything. That like, hurts all. That's not I, I'm a very average gardener. Um, He's great. Great. Uh, but it's nice. It's nice to be mentioned in that regard. But I've also been in the ring with guys who are like all-time greats. Uh, like Jushin Liger and um, like some of those kind of guys and I actually feel like I'm a class at, at least one class if not more below the best guys I've ever been in the ring with so he's so humble he really is you're one of the best right? <coughs> uh, you are the best oh no I was literally just I, I, oh I was like wait I wasn't like hey what about me <laughs> Sometimes people just cough. Yeah. That was an untimely cough. That's exactly what that was. What a coincidence. <laughs> oh, okay. Hi, my name is Rosalind, and my question's for everyone. And I was wondering, like, how does it feel to hear the crowd chanting your guys' name? Oh, my goodness. Unreal. Cheering or booing. <clears throat> Like, when they make noise, I actually have to say, so a few weeks ago, um, oh gosh. I got to do a dark match with John, Dolph, Miz, um, Carmella, and Baron, and it was unreal. The crowd was just insane, and I think it was, they, like, they're great for the girls, but for these guys, it was just unreal to be in the ring and hear the noise they're making and the chants. And I was like, can I do this every week? This is like my favorite match ever. Plus it was fun being with him. But it's, it's unreal. It is, it's a great fun. I think too, it's um, when you hear that, it's feeling the energy from the crowd and that just gives you more energy. And when you're feeling that, it's just, I mean, there's nothing like it. It's great. Uh, there were times it was like really awesome, but there were also times when people were chanting my name when I wasn't out there, and I got really scared that I was going to get in trouble. And uh, but and I honestly, it, like, it's uh, it's the coolest, like, it's the coolest feeling in the world, like, because we're just all of us, with the exception of John, are just normal people, and John is just like a superhuman version of a normal person, right? But like to uh, to hear that. To hear, <laughs> to hear that, I think, for anybody, with whatever you do, right? So, like, uh, I, we just, their family does a really cool thing when somebody does something good. Uh, they, they go like this, they go, uh, what's Hip, hip, hooray. Yeah, hip, hip, hooray. How does it go? <laughs> hip, hip, hooray. Hip, hip, hooray. Brian. Brian, 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 Brian. And it, it, it makes you feel, like, super special. And then just amplify that by 10,000 people, and you just feel super, Aww. super special. So. <laughs> it's weird for me. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, let's go. And sometimes I'm like, ah, oh, I suck. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 
depends on who you ask. Uh, thank you. Hi, I'm Isaiah. I have one for John Cena. This might sting a little. Uh, Isaiah hit me with a stinger. How does it feel to be beaten by AJ Styles for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship? Twice. Yeah, that's a... Yes. I mean... The sting meter just went like that. Man, thanks for the support. Um, Smackdown Live. I, uh, I gotta give all the credit in the world to AJ Styles. And, um, every week I'm on, um, uh, television for WWE and I say out loud, like, whoever the next person that wants to, to grab this thing by the horns and run with it, whoever they think they are, they're going to have to go through me. And AJ Styles has not only gone through me, but through everyone else. And for a guy who had a, a relatively slow start, exciting debut, and a slow start, and looked like he might not make it, for him, with his back against the wall, and literally fighting for his career, to step up and, I mean, he's beat me a couple times, but I think he's one of the best superstars in the WWE period. I don't agree with a lot of the things he says, and sometimes I don't agree with how he acts, but you can't ignore what he does in the ring. It's one of the most gifted superstars we have, and uh, I don't want to say he's going to be a multiple-time champion, because I don't know how long he's going to hold on to that championship. It's, uh, he's very, very gifted, so uh, it was a pleasure to be in the ring with him. And let's not use the term lost, like I said before. I finished second place in both of those matches. Thank you. My question for, for the Bella is, how do you feel about Charlotte and Sasha going into Hell in a Cell? Amazing. Yeah. Which was us. <laughs> no, I'm super excited for them. It's been um, about two years now that we've really had this women empowerment here at WWE and this women's movement and revolution, and it's just nice to see it continue. Hopefully the SmackDown Jam will start to give us more opportunities on the blue side, but I guess he doesn't have power. It's okay. Um, but I think it's, it's amazing. As a woman in the company, it's so amazing to see. Right, and I think it's for all women, for someone like myself who's not in the company right now, but all the generations of women who wanted that and paved the road, it's fine, like you see that and it just makes you go, ah, oh, that's what we wanted and now it's here and it's real and you just hope it continues on. Thank you guys. Thanks. Um, my question's for Bree and Daniel. How many kids are you two planning on having? <laughs> <laughs> two. We only want two. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, my question is for Nikki and John. How long until you guys retire? <laughs> oh, um, well, he's older than me, so. Uh, this has turned horrible. I'm just, I mean, I'm not kidding, but you do you have like seven years on me. This is also continually not well, going well. I guess, I mean, as long as this and the neck will keep up, I'm. I'm not planning on anytime soon, so I don't know. <laughs> well, if you ask a lot of people, I should have been done years ago. Uh, oh, no. Well, apparently like you're not in that camp, but um, <laughs> I, uh, I have a pact with myself. As long as I can keep up uh, with the best talent that WWE has, then I will keep going. And in 2014, 15, and 16, I have especially worked harder, longer, and been more dedicated, and I think the product in the ring shows that, that um, maybe I'm just getting warmed up. So, we'll see. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, can I, Chris, can I just say thank you, because you guys have all inspired me to, like, follow my dreams in life. And, like, oh, good. So, like, can I just ask, what is your guys' opinion on Kane, because he's my favorite wrestler? <laughs> on Kane? Yeah. We'll start with um, Brian's I was going to say, I'm going to Brian handle that one. Yeah. <laughs> I threw Kane a hell of a birthday party in Russia one time. Uh, he did not. <laughs> I was there. He did not. He didn't. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, I, 
I love Kane. I, li I literally, um, me being able to main event WrestleMania is directly correlated to my experience teaming with Kane as Team Hell No. Uh, I was kind of gaining some steam, but then they put Kane and I together, and we really fed off each other well. Uh, Kane is an incredibly smart, um, wonderful human being who loves this business, who I watched him debut in 1997, right? I was in high school, and he's <laughs> still doing it, and he still ha is awesome, right? Nearly 20 years later, so I have the utmost respect for him. He's uh, he's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Hello, uh, my question is for the entire panel. Uh, what is your favorite thing or things about Arizona? Ooh, sunset. I think it's, you know, Nikki and I were raised here, and um, I left Phoenix for a long time. Gosh, how many years? Probably 12 or so years. And moving back, I've appreciated the desert so much. You know, I've realized the beauty of it. And also, I was just like, Phoenix becomes so trendy and cool. Like, all these great local food spots to eat at. But um, Brian and I love living there. And just Any the people, the community. Yeah. Any firebirds in the house? Chaparral High School? Yeah. Really? Heck yeah. Any firebirds. One? Wow. Oh. <laughs> Go firebirds. you, Brian? Uh, I really love the desert ecology. Um, I'm fascinated by the cacti and uh, all the different uh, animals and stuff that are able to survive on so little water. I, um, I don't know if anybody else is interested in that, but uh, I also, if you love, um, if you live here in Phoenix, I love the Desert Botanical Gardens. I think the Botanical Gardens are, are just incredible and they run so many awesome programs and so many wonderful educational opportunities for people, so yeah. Okay, thank you guys. Hi, my name, oh. my question's for Daniel. I was just wondering what it was like working with CM Punk. Uh, so, I have known CM Punk, I think I first met him in 2003, and the very first night that I met him, it was in a tournament in New Jersey that was attended by about 80 people, and he fractured his skull and had to go to the hospital. And uh, so I would not by any means say that we're like, best friends or that we text each other all the time or anything like that, but I think we have a lot of respect for each other because we both came up kind of the same way in that um, independent setting, so. Hello. Hello. Hi. My name's, uh, oh, never mind. I have a question for all you guys. What was your favorite arena in your whole career? Favorite. Arena. Oh, arena. Arena, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Um, I, easy for me, Key Arena in Seattle, Washington. Is that a talking stick? Easy for me as well. You can't have a finish without a start. I started in uh, Chicago, Illinois. All-State Arena, Chicago, Illinois. Nice. Um, Thank you. I would have to say, for me, just because it seems historical and every time we're there they make it so special, is Madison Square yeah. Garden. That's a close second. Yeah, and every time you're backstage and you're walking the halls, there's just something about it. You feel the energy of everyone mm -hmm. who's been through there, and um, it's really special when we're there. What she said. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> Do they make you guys like squat and army Whoa. crawl to ask a question? Yeah. What are you doing? Why? Why so is they don't that? Block oh, okay, the okay. Behind. All right, I get it. I you gotta earn it, I guess. Instantly. You gotta earn it right to get the mic. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's a good workout. Hello, I have a question for all of you. Who? What, what was your first match against? My first match was against uh, Brian Kendrick, who's now on uh, Raw Television. <laughs> At Far West Rodeo in San Antonio, Texas, October 4th, 1999. <laughs> so, my first match ever was in developmental against Chrissy Bain. I don't know if you guys know who Chrissy Bain is, but on television was uh, against Victoria, which was a great honor. And who got you the win? <sighs> Whatever. Me. <laughs> my first match started underneath the ring. <laughs> and then I got the finish, and it was great. <laughs> and uh, mine was against a skilled fella named Kurt Angle. Thank you. 
This one's for John. Do you know the current whereabouts of Juan Cena and whether or not he'll have a dream match with the Calgary Kid? I do. I do. Uh, unfortunately, for all you guys, he's closed down his Snapchat. He no longer uses MySpace. Uh, he has no Twitter anymore, no Facebook. It's tough to get a hold of. Every once in a while, he'll send me a Western Union telegram that simply reads, Hey, John, stop. It's Juan. Stop. Talk to Vince. Stop. Tell him I'm ready whenever he's ready to let me go. Stop. Thank you. He also sent you that sweet tout, too, right? Yeah. I, Brian and I don't check my tout as much as you do, Brian. But he may still have an active tout account. And this will be our last question from the audience today. Okay. Well, I'm very honored to be the last one. What about all the folks that have army crawled up to that point? I respect you guys. It's <laughs> <laughs> noble of you. All right, well, I just wanted to say, first of all, I think you guys are probably four of the best wrestlers in history, really. You guys are fantastic. You put on amazing matches. And uh, I would want to say, what would your dream match be? Uh, first of all, before any of us answer this, how about the last guy who's doing the army crawl? How about he be the last question, because we have a little bit of time that we're supposed to do nothing, and let's just let, it, and let everybody who's doing the army crawl at least get a chance to ask a question. My dream match, easy, que easy question to answer, it's always my next one, because that means I can still do this. So thank you very much. Yes. One. <laughs> First of all, I want to say congratulations to both Bree and Brian. I'm so Thank happy you. for the both of you. My question to you is, Bree, after you guys are planning on done and everything, do you ever return, want to return back to the ring? Heck yeah. <laughs> My due date's in April. I'm like, SummerSlam, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> Rock on. So um, I would love to get back in the ring. I think it would be amazing. And um, I think it would be great to go back as Mama Bella and kick some young girls' butts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. This is for John Cena. When did you get interested in WWE? At a very young age. Um, the first time I saw WWF was 1983. And I haven't stopped watching or loving it since. So a long, long time ago. <laughs> Thank you for it. You're very welcome. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I'm kind of nervous about this, but have you guys thought of any other business ventures outside of WWE? Yes. I'm invested heavily in the banana futures in South America. <laughs> that is total BS. I have no idea what I just said. It just sounded fancy. I would do business if that's what I'm asking. So, yeah. <laughs> How do you top bananas? I, I can tell you. I mean, <laughs> Nah, whatever. No, you said too much. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Hi. 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 So my question is, my question is for the Bella Twins. Um, I know you guys are working on your own company, Birdie Bee, um, and I'm just wondering if you guys are planning in the future, if it's possible, to team up with the WWE Divas Division and maybe make that possible, because I know you guys are already doing so much good for females with your products. Mm. Maybe you can team up and even make it more powerful for girls. Thanks for the Birdie B shout out, by the way. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, definitely. I mean, Birdie B right now um, means so much to us just because of the connection and how we want to inspire women and educate them in feminine health. But um, definitely something that we'd love, obviously, you know, to partner up with WWE and just educate more women and go global. But um, you'll see a lot of good stuff is coming really soon. Yes. So. Good afternoon. So first off, I wanted to say thank you guys for supporting all the met, the vets, military and everything. It's true and proud of me. Uh, Wounded Warriors supplied the free tickets for myself and the child to come here. I'm retired Navy. John, you and I worked with a coworker, and it's Rourke Denver. Yes. So I worked with him really good. I'm very impressed with all watching you guys blossom into your love and relationships or positive things that you guys are doing on TV. So thank you. No, thank you. Thanks. I have a question for Daniel. Will you ever 
I accept the fight for Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania? I, I would love to. I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, sorry. John, I just wanted to say thank you for your 4th of July video. That was awesome. No problem, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And we're done. Thank you. All right, guys. So, if you want more wrestlers and you want to get up close and personal, photographs, autographs, hugs, other questions, they will be signing autographs, photo ops, all afternoon. And uh, John, I might want to put you on the spot since nobody asked. Any chance we can hear you spit a little fan press freestyle? Uh, no. Yes. Please. There is no chance of that. It's a young man's game, and I am not young, but I will say this. Uh, it is so unbelievably awesome to look out and see people as far as you can see. This is supposed to be a fun event. I really hope you guys had fun today. I look forward to seeing, we all look forward to seeing you again at the photographs and again at the autographs. And for us to be up here, it is directly because of your interest. Mm -hmm. So I think on behalf of all of us, this, is, this doesn't rhyme, but it is very sincere. Thank you so, so much for being here today. <laughs> the questions were awesome. Thank you. The was awesome. Thank, Thank you very much.